I've got a number of friends who are fundamentalist Christian. Uh, they tell me that they're worried about my eternal soul and that I need to get right with God uh, because if you don't believe in Jesus, you're not going to go to heaven. In fact, you're going to burn forever. I'm, I'm sure this is nothing new to any of you. Um, they also assure me that there is a very real war going on between God and Satan. Uh, God is trying to win souls to heaven and, and Satan is trying to win them to hell. Uh, so I thought I might take a look at some actual numbers and see how the war is going. Um, yeah, there's a really great site called adherence.com that kind of shows the breakdown of the world by religion. Uh, according to adherence.com, Christianity uh, has about 33% of the world right now, about one third. Uh, but the thing is that that includes uh, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses and, and a number of my Christian friends assure me that those aren't real Christians. Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in Trinity and the uh, Mormons um, believe that you end up becoming a sort of a god. My born again friends also tell me that you must be born again and if you're not born again then you're, you're not going to heaven. So according to them only born again Christians go to heaven. Um, even in the best case, 33%, uh, we have to assume that not all of those people are going to heaven because there are a lot of people who call themselves Christians who really don't believe much or don't act like Christians. You, know, you look, in, look in the prisons and, um, you know, you, you see most of the people in there are Christians, at least in America, which isn't too unusual since it's a primarily Christian nation. Um, but you know, you, we can't assume that everyone who's Christian is going, is going to heaven. Um, so even in the best case for God, uh, assuming everyone is, um, Satan's getting two-thirds of the world and God's only getting one-third. That doesn't seem to make much sense. The numbers get even worse if you figure that only born-again Christians actually get to go to heaven. If we break that 2.1 billion people down um, by sect, we find that only 200 million people are what you would call conservative Protestants. Uh, another 105 million are Pentecostal. So if we assume that all of the conservative Protestants are born again, uh, and the Pentecostals, then we still only have 305 million people in the world who are born again. That's 5% of the planet. So now the numbers are getting really ugly. Satan gets 95% and God only gets 5%. That's assuming that all of those people are going to heaven. You know, it can't be all of them. Even if we say half of them, you're down to 2.5% to for God. Well, something's wrong here. I mean, God's more powerful than Satan, right? That, 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 that can't be. Well, God has a simple fix. You see, most... Most Christians believe that babies who, who die um, go straight to heaven. Um, the Catholic Church used to say they went to limbo, but a few weeks ago they decided that no, no, limbo doesn't exist. Um, those babies, they go, go, they go to heaven. So it's, it's good news for the babies, but it's also very good news for God. Especially if you take the extremely conservative approach that uh, the soul enters the, the body at conception. Uh, because 50% of pregnancies end in spontaneous abortion. Uh, now, that number might seem high, but if you just go Google spontaneous abortion rate, you'll see a, a good article from the Medline Plus Medical Encyclopedia, and you can also find a fact sheet from uh, a Canadian company called NCOM, or MCOM, and both of them will talk about the spontaneous abortion rate. So. Before we're even born, half of us have already died. So what that means is that, that God starts off with a nice base. He's got a base of half the people already. He, he starts off winning, which is only fair because he's God. He's, he, he should be winning. Um, but that's kind of a drag for Satan. You know, he's, he's starting out pretty far down. Um, so the only logical conclusion you can come to is that, well, Satan, you know, he only gets these souls 
if he can manage to get them to grow up. You know, a lot of people have different ideas about when people can finally go to hell. You know, some people say it's uh, 16, some people say 13, some 7. Uh, but most Christians agree that you have to be a certain age before you can not choose to become Christian and end up going to hell. So for Satan, he's got to nurse us through that time and get us to the age where we can finally not decide to become Christian and go to hell. Uh, now the obvious conclusion here is that Satan is pro-life. You know, if somebody goes and gets an abortion, well, Satan has lost that aborted baby. Uh, you know, he, he might have gained the, the mother, but what about the moms who have three and four and five abortions? You know, that's a bad deal for Satan. It's, a, you know, five for one. He, he was probably going to get that lady anyway. Uh, so, the only logical position for Satan is to be pro-life. He's got to stop all these abortions. He's losing more and more because of those abortions. Not only that, but, you know, the infant mortality rate used to be terrible. Uh, and death among small children used to be really bad. Uh, you know, it was only 100, 150 years ago that people would have huge families. They'd have, you know, 12, 15 kids and half of them would die before they reach adulthood. Um, you know, those were souls lost to Satan. You, know, you have to figure back in the olden days, there, there were probably 80% of all souls were dying before Satan even had a chance at them. So the other logical conclusion is that Satan is probably behind a lot of our medical technology. He, it was essential for him to get the infant mortality rate down, uh, for him to improve medicine so that people wouldn't die of childhood diseases, polio, uh, you know, the, the measles. Uh, the, the logical conclusion is that Satan is probably behind most of our medical advances. That's, that's the single best use of his, res of his time and his resources in this war between him and God. Uh, you know, what else could he do? Uh, he, he, he gets most of the adults. He doesn't even need to try for the adults. What he needs to try for is that base that God has. Ultimately, Satan needs to figure out how to stop spontaneous abortions. He needs to, he probably needs to convince us to do everything in, in vitro and, and never have sex. Uh, so that would be the best for, for Satan, is if we never had sex. So I, I think a lot of this stuff we hear against sex, that's probably coming from Satan. Because anytime you have sex and there's a spontaneous abortion, <laughs> That's another lost soul to say. That's another one in the pocket of God. So let's let's recap. Satan is against sex. He's pro-life. He's pro-medicine. Um, and he might even be he might even be pro-science and and pro-education because a lot of educated people just don't buy this crap. 